making art all throughout, you know, being a, being a kid. Um, little kid, I always like to make stuff and paint and draw. Always since little age, just kind of, that was my, you know, the one thing I always gravitated towards, just, uh, just making stuff, building things in my hands, whatever kind of thing it was. I take a lot of inspiration from like the old movies I used to watch, uh, the, the toys I played with, the games I played with. Uh, I grew up in the 80s, so we grew up playing like old Nintendo. I guess all that kind of stuff that I grew up with, the movies I watched, growing up with like the early Star Wars, um, definitely kind of filled in to like, you know, the inspiration I was trying to draw from. But depending on what I'm working on, you know, get, get in the right headspace, you know, get some music going or, um, listen to some, you know, podcast in the background just to get a little bit of noise and then really trying to just get into the work, you know, I like to work in long stretches if I can. Sometimes I'll work for, you know, 10, 12 hours straight and just try to like work all the way through a painting, you know, from start to finish. And it lets me kind of like really get into it and really, you know, be familiar with the, the composition, the space in it. And um, I'm able to really focus. A lot of people at first think that it's just a, you know, kind of a filter that I put in. I'll take the image and then pixelate it and then just, you know, that's what it is. Um, but it's actually not that at all. I take, when I'm working, I you know, take my original image, look at it and in my head, kind of break it down, simplify it, deconstruct it um, to be this kind of abstracted version. Um, so it's not as simple as a computer. I actually don't use any computer tools in the makings of the paintings. I just kind of, you know, just draw them out and think about it while I'm working. Um, okay, so when I start, um, I'll usually think about the, the subject itself, so in this case the boombox, um, and then try to describe the whole thing, kind of simplifying it, but then still keeping the most important details. Um, one of the main things I deal with is uh, describing curves in right angles, so for example in this, you know, the speakers are all circles, a lot of these buttons and dials were circles on here. So to simplify that, break it down into squares, rectangles, bars, and stripes um, is kind of the goal. Um, I also try to really focus on sampling a lot of the original colors. So for this one, for example, if you, you know, if you see it closely, there's maybe, you know, 10 different grays in there to describe the, the, the look of a speaker, you know, on there. Same with this, you know, to try to get some sort of the reflection part of it. I think as an artist, as a visual artist, the, the goal used to be to get your work into galleries. And I think now with the more, the tying in of fashion and streetwear and art at the same time can create these kind of new, new things, you know, new, um, I don't know what the name is for it, but uh, these kind of new collectives. last few years, uh, when I had my daughter, she she was born, everything started to get, like, uh, to take it a little more seriously, I feel like. Before that, you know, it was a lot of just uh, making stuff and, you know, seeing if it happened, and then it turned into, like, a real thing, you know, I had to figure out how to make it a real thing that I could make a living off of and still put my creative passions into it and try to draw the two together. So the last few years have been kind of a balancing act for that. I always wanted to set myself up so I could kind of work for myself in a way. You know, it's not 100% that way. But um, keep me grounded being able to have somewhat of a freedom to do what I want to do with my work. Um, obviously, I still, there's certain things I have to do. But um, I think knowing that I could have like kind of an independent future in it keeps me grounded to know that I need to, you know, focus and figure it out. Connecting with, uh, you know, 
collectors in my work is really rewarding. People that, you know, genuinely support my work and see something in it and connect with it. And to be able to talk with them, have discussions, build relationships and friendships um, has been pretty rewarding. So, you know, there's, there's days and weeks and months where it just seems like like it's impossible and it's not worth your time and there's no reward and you're broke and it's like you just feel like people are against you um to just keep going if you know you really want to have it you know because there are so many opportunities out there out of your kind of like mind state at the time that you can get things rolling you know but there can be very very discouraging times so be persistent you know, keep working, consistently working, you know, through the ups and downs, I think would be good advice. I feel like this past year there was a lot going on, we're all over the place, so I wanna kind of tighten everything up, get organized. Um, I'll be doing some new pieces for new uh, bathing ape stores, which I'm working on right now, some large uh, 16 foot canvases actually, and um, I'll be doing that. Uh, my Instagram, probably the best place to keep current what's going on with exhibits and things like that, which is at Lister Gallery.